Hi, I'm Dan from Ausgel. And I'm Nathan from the Gel Blaster Association. And today I'm having a uh, chat with one of the long-time presidents of one of the largest associations in Australia, now with a pink goatee. All right, thanks for joining us, Nathan. Now, um, you have been at the pointy end of some very controversial topics in the job oil industry, and you've also been a uh, person who's been pushing significantly for reform in the way gel blasters are regulated in our country. Um, tell us a little bit about your background, mate, and how you ended up getting into gel ball and ultimately becoming the president of what is essentially the largest association. Well, this is an interesting story. So uh, a couple of years ago, I was at a mate's house and we had a couple of drinks and he asked me if he all, I wanted to go gel balling the next morning and me being a couple of drinks in said yeah sure no worries woke up the next morning going I don't want to do this uh, but he dragged me along made me feel guilty went to Donnybrook I got on the field at about nine o'clock in the morning left the field at 4 30 absolutely loved it um, now for someone who's not really that fit at all normally don't do a lot of um, exercise or anything like that I was very, very sore after that. So uh, I think I spent nearly two weeks not being able to walk properly. Oh, wow. um, And then from there, I was going every weekend, just every weekend, you know, easing off a little bit, not actually playing the entire day, you know, sitting down yeah. for five minutes in between. Um, and then I started to see the news pick up on it and ev everyone was starting to... There was a lot of infighting within the businesses of the gel ball game. So I just took it upon myself to basically say, well, someone needs to stand up and try and bring everybody together, and that's what started it. So Good on you. Yeah, um, and then it took over my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no surprise there. And I, what, what's one thing that um, I guess that you wish you would have known before getting into gel ball? Is there anything that you wish you'd known back then after getting into the sport? I – this is another weird one um, – yep. I wish I'd known that the people within the industry don't hate each other as much as they make it out. Yeah. So there's all, like I said, there's always been a lot of infighting within the gel ball game. Um, but once you actually go and talk to these people, I don't know where the infight comes from because there is no infighting. Nobody yeah, actually fights against each other. So a, a lot of Chinese whispers, I think. Like yeah. um, one of the funniest examples of uh, of recent times was um, I had Martin Freena. So hey, Marty down at Azrael's Armory. Um, he reached out to me via message and said, "Hey, dude, someone came into the shop today and said that um, I was your uncle." And uh, <laughs> sort of gone well. You know, the, the guy's a little bit younger than me as well, and um, it's it's sort of just a weird thing for for someone to say. But prime example of the sort of stuff that just gets spoken about out there. You're like, where the heck does it come from? Yeah, exactly. And perfect example with you and Tactical yep. Edge. Like, yeah, they they never went with Ozgel at the beginning. So, yep. um, I'm assuming people said to them, "Oh, well, Dan doesn't like you because you didn't go through Ozgel and rah rah yep. rah." So they're like, oh, is it okay if I reach out to Dan? Is, like, is there an issue there? Like, no, well, there's no issue there. <laughs> the, the first time I spoke to Pete on the phone, um, it, that, that's what the discussion was like. He, he was sort of like, oh, I thought you hate me. Yeah. Like, no? Yep. <laughs> and um, that was that. So, yeah, I think there's uh, – it's, it's one of the hardest things in this in industry, I think, as uh, a retailer or field operator is, is listening to those Chinese rumours. It's very easy to get – um, lost in a lot of the rumours that, that get around out there. And um, it's one of the things that I think is vitally important to so many retailers out there is just to drown that stuff out. Don't listen to it. It's not necessarily always going to be the truth. So yeah. Um, yeah, uh, reach out directly. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Like the, I've spoken to pretty much everybody in, within the industry now yeah. and there's not many people who actually have an issue with any of the other in, um, industry holders. So yeah. it, it is very much just Chinese whispers with pretty yeah. much everyone. So. That's it. But mm. it's, uh, yeah, it looks like we're in a good position. But that being said, we're talking industry at the moment. And you know that uh, I was going to have to bring this topic up. South Australia, give us your take on what's happening down there. Mate, SAPOL have just stepped in with, I don't even know what, and just gone, right, we're taking it away from you. And they're trying to play the, we haven't handed out B709As for months. You should have known it was coming. Yep. Nobody's being told anything. Nobody's spoken to Saypol apart from I think two meetings mm. up until this happened, and they were within a couple of weeks of the um, the press conference where Stephen Howard said that they're now going to be regulated. Mm. The fact that Saypol don't even know what they're regulating or how they're regulating it just 
it baffles me. Um, I, what, can, what can you say about it? It's just an absolute yeah. joke. So um, it, it's not going to stick. Like, it will get overturned. It, it, we'll have to go to court. Uh, I know Tack Edge and the, yep. and the other associations, we're all working together to make sure that it's, um, it's going to get overturned. There's pretty much no doubt in my mind that it will get overturned. Um, it's just... You, you just think about the amount of money in taxpayer dollars that's been wasted now on, um, on, on this attempt at trying to regulate Joel Blasters. And, um, and of course, they seem to forget there's this little thing called the Freedom of Information Act. And, uh, you know, you've, you've managed to access uh, some fairly controversial content there, haven't you? Uh, yeah, so the RTI that we got a hold of, um, basically to dumb the entire conversation down from all of the emails that we got... Uh, it basically says, how do we get rid of gel ball in South Australia? Okay, we do it like this. No, that won't work for this reason. Okay, how about this? No, that won't work. How about we do it for this? Okay, how about we do this, 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 and this? And then because of that, this will be... And it just they're just trying whatever they can to get rid of it. it mm-hmm. It's a ban. Like, even now, uh, was it Cat A4 license is required to own a gel blaster. So you now have to get your gel blaster registered as a firearm in South Australia. Now... There's this little thing in Australia where we can't have automatic firearms. So what happens with the gel blasters? Yeah, oh, surprise. We'll put, an, we'll put an exemption in. You can't put an exemption in under a firearms licence. It doesn't work. That's why Queensland did it the way we did it, by putting them in as a restricted item, not a firearm. Therefore, they can still be looked after through weapons licensing, but not be considered a firearm. So, and I, I even brought it up with Stephen Howard in the Zoom meeting that we did. Um, and I said to him, it has to be a Cat 12 um, miscellaneous licence for it to be uh, valid under the fact that they're trying to say that it's a restricted replica. They just they, they have no idea what they're doing. They really don't. So it, it, they're proving it over and over and over again. Well, it, it was quite evident in, um, you know, it's, it's a video that I watched. Uh, I actually watched it for the first time with my wife. And now she's not as into gel ball as me, obviously. But we watched uh, Peter Clark's video mm-hmm. during the Zoom meeting with uh, Stephen Howard. And, um, mate, we, we were in tears watching that video. It yep. was hilarious. Because, I mean, um, you know, th- there was also that defence you saw from Stephen Howard where he's trying to say, you know, um, oh, yeah, look, I've been advised not, not to really say anything. But he did say stuff at the beginning of that conversation. But once he realised he was being trumped by Pete, he just shut up and he had nothing to say from that point on. Yep. So. Well, the what he was saying is that he's actually under investigation, so... Um, there's quite a few of us who have uh, reported him to the Crime and Corruption Committee, yep. along with every other internal review and external review board that we could act, we could find. There's been a lot of them, so that, that's mm. why he couldn't say much because he is actually under criminal investigations. Wow! Um, but it he's doing the wrong thing, so he has to be held accountable. Yeah. So yeah, um, I actually released that Peter Clark section separately, knowing yep. that people would get fired up seeing that, and it, and it yeah. did exactly that. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I've got to tell you, man, it's, it's one of the things I find really frustrating, especially with um, uh, you know, you know, law, law enforcers in each state, is uh, they, they allow opinion to come in too much. And, um, and then they let that opinion sort of, uh, I guess, control their judgment and uh, when they're making very important decisions. And um, we've ended up in a situation like South Australia, where uh, he's just taken upon himself to do what he's done. Um, yes, we know that he's not exactly the only decision maker involved here. However, pretty large piece of the puzzle. Mm-hmm. Yep. And um, if, talking about opinions, we there's numerous video footage around of the guys that are at the protest who are actually asking the police that are looking after the protests. You mm. know, so what's what's your take on this? Should they be banned? Should they be this? And every single officer replies in the same manner. And they say, I don't have an opinion while I have my uniform on. Yes, exactly. Mate, I remember that sort of stuff happening, you know, in my days of defence where we weren't allowed to have an opinion because you're wearing the uniform. And uh, I'll tell you what, mate, like I've got family and friends and all sorts of contacts throughout multiple different police organisations. And um, especially among the junior police, it seems to be a common theme. Um, A lot of them are looking at this going, they're toys, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the uh, the old crusties, I think, that are, are really just sort of weighing in with their um, very uh, conservative opinion. Yeah, and so. I, and just to clarify too, i got no issues with the police that are on the ground. Yep. They do a fantastic job, you know. Absolutely. I've seen a lot of people commenting on Facebook and that, you know, FTP and all these other yeah. stupid, immature, bloody 
comments about, you know, police. Police aren't doing this. It's, yeah. the, it's the admin side of the police that are doing it. So it's not the, the police on the management. ground. Exactly. Yeah. So just clear that up. And that's it. That's definitely one thing that's important for everyone out there to, to mm-hmm. realise is um, don't take this out on the cop that's turning up. For whatever reason, you know, it's 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 not them making these decisions. Yep. So, One of the biggest yeah. supporters in Queensland is the head of weapons licensing here. Yeah, exactly. So that just puts it into perspective. Yeah. Well, he brings family out to one of the local fields. So exactly. I mean, yep. he's, he's right into it. Yep. So yeah, always a good thing. All right. Now, um, more importantly with all of this, what can people do to help? The big thing at the moment, um, besides the obvious, which is going on to the GoFundMe page that uh, the Gel Blaster Association of Australia has organised and donating whatever you can for the fight. Uh, the people of South Australia have to really take this political. They have to go to their local MPs. They've got to go to anybody and everybody that they possibly can. The media, you know, protest every week. Do do whatever you can to to show that we're not backing down. Mm-hmm. Um, the the SAPOL uh, more than you know happy to show that they're not giving up. We need to show that we're not giving up. That's the big thing. And don't hand your blasters in. Do not hand your blasters in because it'll, it'll get overturned and then you've lost your blasters and then you've got to go through court again to try and get your blasters or your, you know, your money back for the blasters. Just don't do it. Hold off. You've got six months. You know, if worst case scenario does happen, which I don't believe it will, you can hand them in in you know, six months' Might time. Might as well use all those months. Exactly. Yeah. Well, um, look, South Australia aside, what do you see in store for the future of the gel blaster industry? I'm in a completely different mindset at the moment. So I am so sick of fighting to keep the sport alive that I'm not going to stop. So I'm not going to, you know, Victoria or Tasmania. I'm going straight to the top. I've had enough. So um, once South Australia is sorted, then I am going to start pushing for nationalisation of the sport. Um, I don't care if it takes one state at a time. It, it's going to happen. I've had enough. I'm just, I'm just, I don't know why. Just It's got me really fired up, this South Australian yep. drama. You know, we, we, we tried to warn those guys in South Australia six months ago this was coming. Yep. So it's time now just to put, your, put our foots down and just go, well, put our feet down, sorry. Put yeah. our feet down and just say, no more. Enough's yep. enough. We want to play with these toys. Yes, they're not children's toys. They're no different to any other toy that you can buy. Um, they're not a children's toy per se because they don't, you know, meet the ACCC standards. Yes, we understand that, but they are a toy. Yeah. They're a fun toy that we like to play with. It's pretty much the definition of a toy. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going straight for the top. Just going to – might as well cut the, you know, snake off at the head. Yeah, no, that's that's good. Uh, that's exactly what, what needs to happen. And, um, you know, when, when you look across the country, um, you know, nationally, most people want gel blasters. That's That's the reality. And uh, when you're trying to restrict something that the people want, you know, you're bound to uh, head for disaster. So that, that's exactly what's happening now. Um, I, I think decision makers, regulators, legislators, politicians, they need to realise people want gel blasters. Stop trying to fight it. Yeah, exactly. And Tasmania's done a fantastic job down there. So without, I don't want to take anything away from Tasmania because they have been fighting really, really hard. But without, a, without much of a fight, Tasmania have pretty much just gone, yep, no worries, you can have them as long as they don't look real. Uh, so imagine what we could get if we went down there and actually fought properly and yeah, had a good old crack at it. So uh, Tasmania, I think, will be the next one to open up. And then from there, we'll just start taking out all the states. Cool. So I'm keen. I like that plan. All right, now, uh, what's on the cards for the future with Nathan Kirby? So um, I am going to organise a charity event which we want everybody involved with within the community. Uh, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. Um, it's going to be, let's call it a celebrity charity boxing match. Oh, I like the way this sounds. So, officially, on your podcast, yep. I thought I'd wait for it for, for yeah, here. Sure. Luke Cudmore. <laughs> I, I want you in the ring <laughs> with me for a boxing match for charity. I choose a charity. He chooses a charity. We make it happen. Well, you've uh, heard it here first, folks. So uh, Nathan Kirby, Luke Cudmore, you're being called out, mate. Um, Charity boxing match. Uh, Nathan, are you going to maintain the pink goatee you've got going there? If he accepts, I'll go full pink. Oh, loving that. All right, well, there you go. So the challenge has been issued. Um, Luke, don't respond to Ausgel. (laughs) 
I don't know what the plans are there, but respond to Nathan and uh, I'll be one of the people sitting ringside, I think. Uh, I want a front row seat to this. Good. I think we should get a lot of support out of it. It should be yep. good. Good little right. money raiser. Yeah, be a lot of fun by the sounds of things. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. Um, tell me a bit more about that. Like, what, what's what's the go? <laughs> you come in here with a pink go to you. Yeah. Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, uh, I found a photo on Facebook floating around of just some random dude. I don't even know who it was who had hair pink, eyebrows pink, eyelashes pink, goatee pink, the whole lot was pink. Everything was pink. It was just pink everywhere. And Ori from You Jelly, I know he'll be watching. Um, hey, Ori. He is known in Maryborough as the dude with pink hair. So I tagged him in the photo and just said, I dare you. That's all it really was. It was just yeah. a bit of fun and games. Then he jumped on and um, he called Cam out and said, Cam, you should do it as well. And I'm like, what do you mean he should do it? What about you? I, I called you out. He goes, oh, if you do it, I'll do it. Next uh, thing you know. Yep. So yesterday I went and got my goatee dyed pink. Now, you did just say, though, hair and eyebrows. I did, yes. I, I'm not doing eyebrows. That's just crazy. <laughs> okay. um, but no, we just said we would do the, the goatees. Yeah. And the fact that Ori's already got pink hair, so yeah. not a big deal for him. Um, but yeah, so that's... I don't even know how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, though, mate. <laughs> yeah, at least you're a man of your word. Yep. <laughs> all right. Well, look, um, that's all we got today anyway, guys, so we'll wrap it up there. Thanks once again, Nathan, for joining us, mate. Much appreciated. No worries. Uh, do you want to just give us a heads up um, on some of the links people can follow to find you and your association and also the association to donate the cash? Okay, so um, the your best point of contact for our association is Facebook page, which is just the Gel Blaster Association, Inc., um, uh, we do have the web, a website, www.gelblasterassociation.com.au. Uh, having a few issues with keeping that up to date at, at the moment. Um, the Gel Blaster Association of Australia has a their own GoFundMe page, which I have shared all over Facebook, so it's everywhere on socials. Yep. That That's pretty much all we've got. Awesome. All right. Much appreciated. No worries. And guys, as always, I'm Dan from Ausgel. You can find us at www.ausgel.com.au. Also on YouTube and Facebook under Ausgel, Instagram at Ausgel Ammo and on TikTok. Thanks a lot, guys. See ya. Yeah.